want to know about life on the road? It's booze, tacos, angry dwarfs, strippers waving guns, and fees, fights, cancel flights, running with the runs, and blacklists, bounce checks, great a bachelorette, <laughs> drunks in the front, making out for your set, and middle acts doing blow more missing merch, and drive the rental car past another mega church, and juice keys, vagina fist, your cell phone is gone, one big law and order marathon. We can just go ahead and talk about that. Right now, give me a mic check. Even though I checked before we left, mic check one, check, 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 check. When do you think this will drop? By the way, uh, tonight. Oh, sweet. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay. Uh, hey, thanks for tuning in to Road Stories, everybody. I'm your host uh, Murray Valeriano, part of the All Things Comedy Network. If you haven't uh, checked out All Things Comedy, go check it out. There's a lot of great comics over there. Uh, one of which is with me today. Hey, are you? You're still part of All Things Comedy, yeah. right? Okay. <laughs> are you a funny comic? That's what I meant to ask. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not all funny. Right. Um, all right. Graham Elwood needs no introduction. Thanks for coming over. I always appreciate when you do. Sure, man. Uh, as much as I see you, I still don't see you enough. I know. Isn't that sweet? Well, that just means we're not surfing enough. Ah, man. That's what that means. Yes, it does. If we're seeing each other a lot. It means we're surfing a lot. Yes. Which is a great thing. That oh. means there's swells and warm weather. And we got a ton of swell coming in over the next two weeks. Are you really? in town? I go to Lake Tahoe on Wednesday. Oh, you going to ski? Yeah. All right, well, that's all right. I'll give you that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you that. Um, all right, a couple things. All right, Graham, you can follow along with this. I've been... Uh, all right, okay. So I've been super busy, and not only have I been busy, I got booked, like, last minute two weekends ago, and then I got a writing gig. So our, my, my podcast was late, so I apologize for that. But it's a great episode. It's Jimmy Pardo. It's Mike Siegel. We're still, if you buy any, if you buy my album, if you buy T-shirts, uh, the money's going to Parkcastathon this year. You have till Saturday, March 5th, I think. Is that what's coming? March 5th, I right? think so. Yeah, that's when they're doing it. You have till then. And uh, so the money's going to go to that. And every year we do that. And you guys are great for doing it every year. And I always, I, I don't take credit for it. I put it in under the Road Stories listeners. I don't take your money. Just like, Murray. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, keep on doing that. And then the following week, I ended up going to the dentist and having teeth pulled and braces. <gasps> so this is my first podcast with braces. I don't know if you can hear anything going on in my face? <laughs> what are you supposed to, I don't think you're supposed to hear like, like keys rattling? Or? I don't know if I'm, if, if I'm lisping or whatever. I did do a show the other night, uh, my first stand-up show with braces. and went fine. I spit all over the front row. Oh, nice. But I always do that What anyway. prompted this? What, why at this stage of your life did you go, you know what, I'm going to go braces? Uh, I'd go, I like to say 20% vanity and 80% uh, orthodontic, but my wife says sixty percent vanity. <laughs> and I think she's being polite. Oh, all right, let's well, push it to eighty. Okay, it's eighty percent. It's ninety percent vanity and ninety-seven percent vanity. And then the guy needed the money. Um, <laughs> Your orthodontist was like, "Murray, I'm in a jam. Do you mind getting braces for me?" <laughs> oh, sure. Okay, oh, if it helps okay. you out in your family. <laughs> uh, Jay, I just, um, I, I never let my. I never got my wisdom teeth pulled, oh. so it just shoved everything, and yeah. everything's kind of grown all over each other, and it's been a long time coming. I should have done it about 10 years ago. Right. But um, why not? Uh, I also bought clippers, and my wife is cutting my hair now, so I'm living the life of a nine-year-old. I don't <laughs> <laughs> I literally I watched my hairdresser last and I call her a hairdresser she got fired from Fantastic Sam's um, <laughs> and it's in the back of a, a warehouse no lie um, where, where, wait, wait a minute <laughs> hold on where are you finding this uh, hair I went, this I, hair club this I, hair fight club it's a, it's a, it's a one person club um, I, I, I used to go, I found this when I first moved to town I went to Fantastic Sam's and found that, well, I initially found one woman who cut my hair really well, and then we went out on a date, and that didn't go well, so I had to find another one. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> you can't date your hairdresser. And then I found this other old, really nice, old, old Russian woman at, at Fantastic Sam's over on 3rd, and she got fired. Um, but then she resurfaced and, and texted me. She's like, I have my own space now. Come, come back and get your hair cut. I'm like, sweet. She cuts my hair so great. Then it ended up being uh, on La Cienega, south of the 10, in a warehouse. Where like, there's like the Russian mafia is running dog fighting? Pretty, or yeah. <laughs> there, this is a tax shelter. Whatever this, <laughs> whatever's going Laundering on. Laundering facility. Yeah. Okay. And so it's like, just think of uh, Die Hard. Oh, think of Die Hard, okay. all the levels where, where the, the party wasn't going on. That's what it looks like. 
<laughs> and it, except for in the far corner, there's a mirror propped up against the wall, leaning, okay. and a chair, and a hair dryer, and clippers, which I found out you could buy on Amazon. So I'm like, so I watched her cut my hair for 10. I'm like, you know what? I think I can do this because I usually kind of clean it up myself when I get home. So, uh, so then what? You just have your wife clean up your neck and around the ears, basically? No, my wife does the whole thing. Just bzzz. we're talk- This is test type right here, buddy. This is yesterday. Wow. This is yesterday. So, uh, yeah. So my wife enjoyed it. It was kind of therapeutic, I think. Just Has she ever done any sort of hairdressing or anything? Or? No, she, she started cutting my, <laughs> my son's hair. And uh, she's not that good at it. So I, but, but she uses scissors, not clippers. So, so you I got, like definitely go after my head. Yeah, since, get to, since, <laughs> since my son, oh, so, since my son looks like a special needs child, maybe I, so should his dad. Maybe that's a look I should go for. But but I figured. But I did a lot of research. I didn't just jump into this willy nilly. All right, I, I watched well, I her. I love that you say that. You know, you can buy clippers on Amazon. No, really, Marie. <laughs> There's stuff you can buy on. Like you could buy anything on Amazon. Do not. Hey, just because I do my homework doesn't mean you have to look down on me. Okay, I'm sorry. You're still paying twenty dollars to get a haircut. When in two haircuts, mine start paying for itself. Well, if I I don't I wouldn't trust. I see the financial reward on that. Sure, I do. If I knew someone that I could, I found this woman in a Vietnamese nail salon mm-hmm. about ten years ago. Racist. <laughs> Did you buy her? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, I mean every single person that works there is Vietnamese and they own it. Okay. And it's very obvious when you walk in there, they're all talking in Vietnamese. Okay. So, and I say that because I would never have any reason to go into a place. I don't get my nails. Done. Yeah, why were you going into a nails? Were you with your girlfriend or No, I was walking down the street near I live. Mm-hmm. And I moved from the valley to San- I had a, I got to back way up. All right, we're going to back up. This is- I had, I was a guy that always went to old man barbershops. Okay. And found a guy when I was living in Chicago that was great. There was a guy, and I would, like, when I went to college in Arizona, I found a guy. It was mm-hmm. the El Rancho Barbershop in Tucson. Great shop over there. Check right. him out. Say, it's our sponsor. Gra- it's yeah, our t- sponsor tell this Gra- week. <laughs> tell, tell him Graham said hi. Um, I found a guy in Chicago, and... When I moved to L.A., I just couldn't. There's no, like, old man barbers. They're mm-hmm. hard to find. Right. So I'd go to these salons, and I just bopped around. I mean, for eight years, it was like I never had, like, I'd find someone, and they'd be good, and then they'd move, you know, whatever. Sure. So I'm in Santa Monica. And there was an old man barber shop in Santa Monica, and I went there, but the guy was, like, a thousand years old. His hands were starting to shake, no <laughs> lie. It made me nervous. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when, you know, I was getting some of his racist like they're gonna let gays get married then you know i was like all right i can't i'm sorry there's this vietnamese toe place down the street (laughs) you know a bunch of chinamen are fixing your feet uh i think they're they're from korea yeah it's uh vietnam actually sir (laughs) Ah, whatever (laughs) same thing so so i was like i gotta find new so i'm walking down uh main street in santa monica and i see this and they're like men's haircuts like 18 bucks Mm -hmm. and i'm like all right well i don't know what else to do and this woman, this is like Angela Johnson's bit from her. Act. Oh, really? Oh, that's hilarious. Her name is Tammy. <laughs> that's my, the woman who cuts my hair. That's the name of the woman in Angela Johnson's bit. So if you go to Angela Johnson, probably YouTube or whatever, mm-hmm. you'll see that Vietnamese nail salon lady. She's been doing that. that that's the thing that broke her out. In right. Yes. We actually talked about that on the last episode. Um, and so I went in there and this woman, Tammy, doesn't speak a lot of English, cut my hair perfectly. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, let's see if this was a one-off. Because that's the other thing. I'd go to people and they would change it. I was like, just put it the same. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Like, do what you did last Remember time. Remember last time? Yeah, do same that. thing. Do that. My head hasn't changed. Yeah. <laughs> so she did it every t- She's been cutting my hair perfectly ev- like, and great. And right. I just can't, you know, I, I can't, I'm afraid to, to run away from it. No, I understand. That's why I stuck with this woman for yes, 20 years. You got it. 20 years. I know. And and it was funny. Like, there was another girl that worked in there that this is like before I got married. I'm single and she'd flirt with me a lot. And I thought about, well, I could maybe. And then mm. I went, if this goes south, I got to get a new. I can't, Bad haircuts. I can't, I can't do it. Yeah. So I was like, I'm not even going to mess with someone that works with my hairdresser because I don't want to mess this up. No, no. Good call. Learn from my mistakes. Yeah. That's why I'm here. <laughs> 
I'm here to teach. Then you're having some gypsy cut your head no, above an auto a chop that. shop. You know what I mean? Like it's a weird thing. You know what was the what was the what was the tur- cutting point? The the turning on the the turning point for me was when we were in this empty and she's still there. To, I have as a matter of fact, I have to break the news to this poor woman that I'm no longer coming to her to her uh, salon. I use quotes. Um, she's in there cutting my hair halfway through. Clippers, bzz, electricity goes out. Just goes out. So we had to go down on the next floor where all the workers were working, and I'm in the hallway in this bright pink bib getting my hair cut as all these like, you know, construction workers are working walking by me, like, hey, how you doing? Just getting my hair cut. Just leave me alone. Oh, so I'm like, all right, I think I can do this. I watched for a long time. I took down the numbers of the clipper size she uses. And and all that. What do you use? A two, three on the side? Uh, eight. I would go nine, but they didn't have nines in this one. I think a nine is a is an aftermarket buy. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody got any uh, black market nines out there <laughs> listening? Send them to Murray. I know where we can? I know where we can get rid of them. So that's what's been going on in my life. It's okay. been very hectic. Okay. We're back on schedule. I apologize for you uh, to you guys uh, for just kind of the weird. Weird schedule we had going on, but we're back on schedule again, and I'm happy to be here. And um, <clears throat> what we're doing today is we're going to do something a little different. Um, the other day, I was driving down to the Bray Improv, and, and I thought I was thinking about my next episode, and, and I'm like, you know what? I never, I haven't really involved the listeners much lately, and so I just threw up on Facebook just haphazardly, hey, if you got a question for a comedian that you've always wanted to ask, post it here on Facebook. And I thought maybe I'd get one or two. I think last night it was like 35 within nice. a half an hour. So I haven't read them. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't read any of these questions. Um, and, um, and so I was going to do it myself. I was going to drive back from Bray and, and do it myself. But then I thought, you know, now let me, get, let me get another comedian in here and let's answer these questions. Okay. And then I thought, who do I want? And I thought, well, who do I have the most fun with? Who do I, who do I love riffing with and hanging out with? And so I called Graham. And so Graham, thank you so much for, for coming and doing this and letting me spring this on you. I thought the joke was going to be, so I called this one guy. He wasn't available. Graham happens to live close. So (laughs) I would have liked that. Uh, You know what? It's not the first joke that comedians do. It's the second thought. That's what (laughs) separates us from the layman. (laughs) Maybe I should have called somebody. Maybe I should have called Chris Mancini. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So these are, I, I put this on, now I got to find it and I'm going off my phone here. So I literally, I, uh, let me see. There's, oh, I posted the video for the art of noise closer to the edit. You should look that up. That's good. Nice. Thank you. Uh, what's been going on, Graham, while I, fig- while my phone loads? What has been going on? Um, Comedy film nerds, Chris Mancini and myself, that's our podcast. For those of you who don't listen, check it out. It's on iTunes and Mm comedyfilmnerds.com. We are doing a live. I don't know. By the time people get this, it might be too late. It's going to be too late. But tell them anyway. Because you can you can do it later. It's okay. a great thing. So we're going to do a live Oscars commentary only at rabble.tv. Um, so if you have, but for the fans listening after the fact, by the time you're hearing this, their Oscars are probably done. But it will be archived so let's say you didn't watch the oscars but you recorded it you dvr sure it? yeah dvr it you could go back and watch it and then listen to chris mancini and i do commentary where it's going to be a lot of us making fun of the academy right um so if you go to rabble.tv r-a-b-b-l-e yeah dot tv dot tv forward slash um there is a whole thing for cfm but just go to rabble.tv okay. and type in comedy film nerds oscars and you'll get it okay um so this is going to be a tight episode because we both have, I have a fancy schmancy Oscar party to go to. Yes. And you got your fancy schmancy stuff to go to. So we'll, we'll make this a tight one. Yeah. Um, actually, I have no fancy schmancy. Actually, I'm going to an Oscar party where a bunch of people didn't get nominated and they're all going to be pissy. You should have them on your rabble. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, that guy's a hack. Call him a set decorator. Jesus Christ, I can buy that at Whole Foods. Oh, great. I would love to be at that party. Uh, I also I was going to invite you, but then I saw you're doing the rabble thing, so I couldn't do that. I'm still scrolling down. Wow, I post a lot of stuff on Facebook. I just realized. Wow. <laughs> oh, here we are. Quick. Do you have a question you'd like to ask a comedian? Leave your question on the comment section. Do it fast. We're recording shortly. Four days later. Uh, <laughs> all right. 20. Wow. What do we yeah, we got about 29 comments. Okay. All right. Here we go. 29. All right. Uh, from Mark Kling, a guy I went to high school with. Nice. Uh, I'm coming to L.A. Can I sleep on your wife? I mean couch. Fuck you. That was stupid. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was that was not good. Uh he said, I'm only kidding. I'm a comedian. Uh not with that joke, you're not. 
Okay, let's go down to the next one. Uh, this is from listener Daryl Asher. I bet he's a comedy film nerd yes, fan. Yes, Daryl uh, is definitely a podcast fan. True or false? Most of your better comedians cut their own hair. <laughs> 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 Steve Martin has cut his hair for years. That's how we got to the top. Seinfeld, same thing. Oh, we were talking about we were talking about me cutting cutting my hair on the last episode because oh. I was going to buy the Clippers, and I've had conversations with Daryl Asher. Couldn't have been better timing, Daryl, on that question. That was hilarious. Nice question. Uh, and I said this last time, Jake Johansson still uses the Floby. He uses a Floby still to this day. I think he's talked about it on this show. Wow, that's where you hook your vacuum yeah. up to the Clippers. I don't understand. What and if I you did. added that up, he's probably saved like twenty grand or something over the years. Why do you think he's got a nice house in Santa Monica? <laughs> it's not comedy money. No, he does the opposite of what Leno does. It's, I don't use my stand-up money. I use my hair saving money, my hair cutting money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andrew Rich, listener. Uh, oh, what's your favorite George Carlin bit? That's interesting. I, that's a good for that me. It would question. it would have to be the baseball football one. Yeah, that's my favorite one. That makes sense. Because I love one. both of those sports, and I love his take on, uh-huh. you know, football's on, and baseball's just that. Like, I just, <laughs> I just love, I love that bit. Um, I don't know. Uh, my favorite joke he ever did was, uh, he was talking about the word faggot, and he's like, faggot doesn't mean what it means today. Uh, when I was a kid, a f- I'm, I'm completely butchering this. When I was a kid, a faggot was a guy who wouldn't go downtown and beat up the queers with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great joke. <laughs> yeah, I got it. I know I've told the story a thousand times, but I've got. I, I, I worked the door at the comedy store when he was working out his one of his specials, and that was amazing to watch. Right, because from Monday, and he did like six nights in a row, and he came out with notes and like a church table, and watching it from Monday to how it evolved by Saturday was. It wasn't like he did a set, went home, went to bed. Went to the gym the next day, came home, did it again. No, he went home, rewrote everything, came back, tried it a different way, moved it all wow. around. It was pretty cool to watch. That's got to be impressive. And that was the night where I had to walk. I walked to a chance to walk him out to the parking lot, and there's a hallway in the back of the comedy store. And you're looking at my braces, aren't you? You're just no, staring right no. at him. You're just staring oh, right God, at him. You're the worst. <laughs> Oh, God, no, you don't look fat in those pants, Murray. <laughs> you look pretty. I have put on a couple pounds. Oh, shut <laughs> up. <laughs> so I'm walking George Carlin out the hallway, and just for some reason that day Gallagher stopped in. Just completely out of the blue, Gallagher stopped in, and as we're walking out, I look on stage in the original room, and it's uh, Willie Tyler and Lester. And then we walk out to the parking lot and Franklin Ajay is there. And I'm like, is this 1988? <laughs> what, like, what weird time warp did I go through? Hey, there's the unknown comic. There's uh, Sandra Bernhardt. Like, it's, let's get crazy. I worked with the unknown comic down at the Comedy Magic Club years back. And I, he, he came out as the unknown comic, but nobody believed he was the unknown comic. He was like, oh, that's just a guy doing the unknown comic thing. And I thought, what a weird kind of turn his career because first he was the unknown comic. For those of you who don't know, the unknown comic was a comedian who wore a paper bag over his head. Right. Who I used to dress up as Halloween as the unknown comic in school. And uh, first time I ever saw him was a kid on the Gong Show. Oh, the Gong Show! I think I saw him on Sha Na Na. Was the uh. first time I saw him. <laughs> <laughs> we are not dating ourselves. No, at we're all. not old These are at all. Current TV shows: <laughs> Sha Na Na and the Gong Show. <laughs> the Gong Show was amazing. The Gong Show was so much fun. It was so. It was one of the. I think there's several things that I point to influencing my becoming a comedian. Uh huh. My whole family sitting around listening to Steve Martin records. Okay. The when Saturday Night Live first hit, because Saturday, Friday, Saturday is the only nights I could stay up late. Okay. And watching the Gong Show and sitcoms, like I'd watch sure, Mash sure, and stuff of like that. But the Gong Show was where I was like, oh, this is just comedy is just this, and like the whole cocktail party vibe of so many TV shows from the 70s. Right, like yeah, Hollywood definitely. Squares and Match Game. We're just like, oh, these are rich people, Hollywood people just getting boozed up and having a blast. <laughs> um, and I love the gong show. And that's where I met, the, that's where I saw the unknown comic. And yeah. he's like, loved it when he came out. Mm-hmm. One time he was like, hey, let me show you pictures of my kids. And then threw out smaller bags. Oh, like, hilarious. Like. The first time I ever went on stage, I guess you can call this my first stand up, was at a, uh, uh, talent show at my dad's church and I went on as the unknown comic 
And my opening joke was, and I kind of haven't thought of this in years, I, I put my bag over my head and I cut out the eyes. Then I put a plastic bag over my head and it said, you probably don't recognize me, I had plastic surgery. No, that's a great joke. 16, buddy. That's a 16. great joke. Why am I not more famous? <laughs> <laughs> it turns really dark. Of course. <laughs> uh, thanks, Daryl. Oh, no, that wasn't Daryl Asher. That was, uh, who was that, Andrew Rich? Bernadette Batts. You know Bernadette? I know. I love Bernadette. Remember Bernadette? She Bernadette's wrote, great. I did a million shows with her. She wrote, who runs that room? <laughs> Just such a non sequitur, but perfect comedian question. <laughs> Explain who runs that room, Graham. The who runs that room joke is something that anytime a comic is talking about some gig, a, another comic will go, who books that? Because we're always yeah. trying to hustle to get work. So it's it's a common thing. We've all said it. And I said it last night. I did a show <laughs> at the Improv and was talking to Lori Kilmartin. I did this variety show at the Improv. Uh-huh. Lori Kilmartin was on the show. She writes for Conan. I was like, hey, who books the comics on Conan? She's right. like, oh, here's the guy's address. So, Oh, good. Um Physical address. I got to show up at his house. <laughs> That's awkward. Um, <laughs> do you cut your own hair? <laughs> um, so, um, so then for comedians, then when somebody says something horrible or like, God, I had this awful gig. It wasn't a thing. A comic will then make the joke. Oh, who books that? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Always laugh. It's like a constant. And we all make that joke, but it's, I still, it's one of those jokes. Oh, yeah. It's so inside, but I love it. I love making it. I love hearing it. I love that she put it on that thing. <laughs> and ask me your questions. Who books that gig? That's why I love comics. And Bernadette makes me laugh. And you can tell that the shallower of the comic, because when they drop that, when they seriously drop that line, because you could be like, oh, man, I had the set of my life. I was at the improv last night. You know, JP from the Conan was there. Yeah. And I think my life's good. Who books that? You know, like <laughs> you just completely miss the whole, oh man, I had the worst night of my life. Uh, I'm really yeah. thinking about getting out of the business. I don't understand. And uh, who, books who books that they're again? Not listening yeah, yeah they're not listening to your they story. They heard gig? At all. Yeah, they heard gig, pay. And who, who books that? Yeah, is who the books next that? Question. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's three questions There's a gig, mm-hmm. where's the gig, it pays, and who books it? Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's the thing. So exactly. you answered the first two <laughs> <laughs> with the night you almost killed yourself in right, the comedy exactly. condo. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Des Moines and it's cash. And they put you up? Yeah. And dinner? <laughs> All right. All right. right. <laughs> cool book that. There was a great, I saw uh, an, inter- uh, an interview with an astronaut one time and I can't remember who it was, but it, they were doing like a town hall and somebody raised their hand and, and said, Where do you go to the bathroom? And he said, The guy who mentored me as a astronaut said, You can always tell the level of maturity by how early that question comes. In the, if you answer all the other scientific questions right. first, and then where did the, then you're good. But if you're starting off with where do you go to the bathroom, it's all downhill from there. That's hilarious. I usually like to open with, uh, "Did we really land on the moon?" Yeah, that's one. Stop your lies. Yeah, I usually start with that one. <laughs> Man, I wish there's a side of me. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but there is a side of me that really wishes we didn't land on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> I am a. I would love the ultimate fucking prank on everybody, right? <laughs> Come on, a gag. Come on. <laughs> I mean, I thought Copperfield was impressive, making the Statue of Liberty disappear. But I'm definitely an astronaut file. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So the landing on the moon, I think, is awesome. How do you ex- how do you explain the Van Allen ring of uh, radiation around the Earth? The Van Allen ring of radiation mm-hmm. around the Earth. So what is that theory? That is, we have a radiation ring. I believe it's the Van Allen ring of radiation around the Earth and that nothing can get through it because you'll just melt. Mm. So that is the reason why we've never sent anybody to the moon. Like all the moon Yeah, because you, like, uh, you can't get through the ring of radiation. According to? <laughs> Some dude I saw on PBS. Oh, okay. Well, it's PBS! Guy... <laughs> well... <laughs> That's just one of the, th- and he kept saying, hey, put on a suit and drop yourself in a hot nuclear reactor and then I'll shut up. Like that was his whole thing. Right. And nobody ever really did that yet, I don't think. Well, that's an interesting theory. I think he's a wingbird. Oh, well, that's and, cool. And uh, like, like I said, there's too many people involved mm-hmm. for it to be a conspiracy. If, if it was a conspiracy, there's way too many people involved for there not to be someone inside NASA or one of the astronauts going, come on. There's no. There's no way. Plus, the the whole like I've I've seen the well. Look at the how could they do this? Look right, at the, right. How come the flag is? Yeah, yeah. Is well, there is some atmosphere on the moon. 
and things do move a little, so you are going to see that happen. Sure. You know, where are the shadows? Well, if the sun was <laughs> shining right down, there is like, I, I, and and I love the fact that, you know, Buzz Aldrin punched one of those guys in the mouth once. To shut him up. He was letting all the secrets out. Mm, I no. think so. I think, I think if you're- Hey, Alan, ring of radiation, buddy. Yeah. That's all I say. All right. If you're guilty, you backpedal. You oh yeah, you don't you don't punch a guy in the mouth. You don't go shut up. Oh yeah, I guess you would bring more attention to it. Yeah, if you punch a guy in the You'd mouth, you'd be like, oh no, but I no, with me that you backpedal. You well, know, that's the training. Mm. That's where the training comes. All in. of them, all of them. <laughs> I'm just saying, we're trained. All to I lie. know is I think Japan is scheduled to put somebody in the mood within the next uh, six years, mm -hmm. and we'll know because we left a bunch of shit up there. Mm -hmm. So if it's not there, then we'll wow. know. Wow. Okay. But it'll shut up. It'll, if it'll anything, it'll shut at least all those conspiracy theories. I mean, we kind of do know because we've already been up there a bunch, but that's <laughs> so you think. And not a bunch. We've been in outer space a bunch. We haven't been to the moon a bunch. Uh, well, we did 11. We did 12. A bunch? We did 14. Apollo 11, 12, and 14. Did they land? Yeah. They did? Yeah, that's part of the theory. Is I, I remember watching one of these uh, debunk the the it didn't happen shows, yeah. and they, they interviewed the de, these guys that were like, "How come we never went back?" And then they go to NASA, they're like, "What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> Apollo twelve? It just wasn't as covered as much." Are they picking up these guys at a bar? Like, get, get some guys who've done their research, like I have. Sure, Van Allen Ring of Radiation. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> I'm not even sure that's the name of it. <laughs> <laughs> the Van Halen Ring of Radiation, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, why didn't they name their album that? Oh, ring it, of Radiation? It's the Running with the Devil Ring of Radiation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Daryl Asher's back for round two. Let's hope this is a legitimate question. Hi, Bernadette, by the way. Oh, hi, Bernadette. <laughs> I'm actually going to see Bernadette tonight at this party. Oh, nice. It's just a weird series of coincidences. We're going to... She's oh, married oh, with kids and everything? Yeah, she's right? married to a comedian named Michael Batts. Uh-huh. And uh, we're going uh, with the executive producer my wife works with a lot that we're really good friends with. Just have their kids go to the same preschool as Bernadette's kids. Oh, do. nice. So I'll see Bernadette later. Tell Bernadette today. I said hello. I uh, what's your, this is Daryl Asher again. What's your go to joke when audience, when the audience is getting away from you? And, ooh, two farter. And are street jokes fair game in such desperate circumstances? <sighs> good question. I don't necessarily have a go-to when the audience is, I don't have like a line that I use. If like right. when the audience is getting away and they're not paying attention or they're talking, I usually go right at them, mm -hmm. go right at the table. That's not talking. Yeah. Make fun of them. Um, street jokes, you know, I'm not a big proponent of street jokes, but I feel like if your back is against the wall, <laughs> like, Hacking someone to, to get out of a situation, that's bullshit. Right. That's bullshit. But a street joke, I mean, if that's what you got to do to survive, like you're emceeing, you know, a late show. Mm -hmm. I mean, I used to, you know, or you're in Vegas and you got to, you know, and you're the MC and the crowd's stiff or not, they're, they're not, they're fucking around and not paying attention. They're all right. still talking and on their phones and they're not taking the MC seriously. And the, I mean, I did this way back when I used to MC. I mean, sometimes I would do the, you know, oh ma'am, what's your birthday? Uh, or oh, yeah, I'm not going to ask how old you are. That's rude. How much do you weigh? I mean, that's yeah, yeah. a thousand years sure. old. People showing up late. Can I get you something like a watch? Yeah, yeah. Those are a million years old. I wouldn't I, call those street jokes, though. No, I know those street, are kind of staples. Would you call them staples? In, they're not. Yeah, they're not street jokes, but they're definitely like, a, you know. Old comic, sure, sure, crutches. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah, know yeah. what you'd call them. I would put them in the same category as a street joke, yeah. personally. Yeah, okay, that makes um, sense. If you have, I don't, you know, I don't know that I. I I'm not going to look down on someone that does that mm -hmm. has to do a street joke in that situation. I look down on people that are doing street jokes in their act. Oh yeah, as just part of their act. Then I'm like, you have no business being up there. Yeah, yeah. And it's usually some dude who hasn't written a new like. Right. Just, no, I followed a guy like I did. A, I talked about this last week. I followed a guy. I did a benefit. And the opener was just all street jokes and then closed with Keenan Ivory Way and best joke. <laughs> like, oh, man. Wow. Um, I, um, I agree with you. I don't have anything. I don't have a go to. I do what you do. I just address the situation. Yeah. I just figure out what's going on. But there was a comic on here and I forget who it was who said, hey, if you're in Idaho and you're you're just tanking and you're you're getting crickets and you need my golf bit, go for it. <laughs> 
<laughs> if it's going to save you, go ahead. Just call me up and tell me you did it. That's all I ask. I, I have some, I don't have street jokes, but I have some stock, my stock, mm-hmm. like going into my old inventory of just like dick jokes that I know, because usually a dick joke or an F-bomb will get their attention. Yeah. And I've had to do that where I'm just like, okay, you want this dick joke from 1993? Guess what, <laughs> motherfucker? Here it is because you're too dumb to get the new tracks. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. No, not bad. I do one uh, stock hack joke that I like, but I always call it out when I do it. And I'm just like, that's the oldest one in the book. I don't even know why you guys are laughing at that. Read a book or something. <laughs> Uh, Casey Murphy, uh, oh, he's been with me a long time. Casey, thanks for uh, writing in. Is the comedy club condo mentioned in some older stories still a thing, or is that a relic from the 80s and 90s? Still a thing. And a relic from the 80s and 90s. It is a relic from the 80s and 90s that is sadly still a thing. <laughs> it should be gone with. Yeah. Um, but I'm very excited. I just found out that they're redoing. We've got a great condo down at the La Jolla Comedy Store that they're redoing. Oh, great. They're finally redoing that you know, piece of shit. The downtown Zanies in Chicago has a studio apartment that's a block away. And I kind of get it because it's downtown Chicago and mm. hotels are 250 a night. Sure. If it's a crowded weekend, if it's a bit it's 3, you know, like 190 200 is the cheapest you can get. So I I kind of get that mm-hmm. and it is fi- I have stayed in it. It's fine, you know, it's it's and it's a block away mm-hmm. and it's in a cool neighborhood like where the downtown Zanies is. And they only do that for the downtown Zanies. The one out in Rosemont, they put you in a nice hotel. Oh, really? So I think St. Charles, they put you in a nice hotel. Uh-huh. So so it's really just, it's not them being cheap assholes. It's them going, look, we just don't have it in the budget. Right. When a big name act comes in that's selling out the- Oh, sure. Then, of course, that act yeah, yeah. gets whatever they want. But There's a nice, I'm doing uh, Laughs and Lemon in Sacramento in June, and they've got- they bought nice condos oh or, really yeah they got one for the uh middle one for the headliner and they're decent and they're right across the street and they're in old town mm-hmm. sacramento so you have all that touristy stuff you can do that's the other thing too i'm not sharing i'm not a high school volleyball team like i'm not sharing an apartment with fucking opening acts i don't like i'm not right like and i and the clubs that still do that i mean one club i had a conversation with the guy and he was like look it's it's We don't have the money in this market. And I said, I go, honestly, I go, add up all of your costs with this condo. You clean it, all of the utilities, insurance, all of it. Now add up your hours. Put a a dollar amount on your per hour wage. Mm -hmm. Add all that up. I bet you. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you could get some kind of deal with a, with a, you know, we're talking about a Hampton Inn, sure, or some Fairfield by Marriott. These aren't these. You know, these are hotels that are going to book out for ninety five, one hundred dollars a night. I bet you could get them down to fifty nine dollars a night. Double Tree, I'll take a Double on. Tree. I like a Dude, Double Tree. Hampton Inns are amazing. Yeah, I, I don't know if I say to Hampton. Here's here's my thing on Hampton. So I I I focus on. I'm a big reward miles right. points person. So I focus all my flights on United. Mm-hmm. And by doing so, I get upgraded. I just got upgraded back from Minnesota. I get six international upgrades a year. Oh, nice. I flew fucking first class to Australia. Oh, that's the only way to go to Australia, right? man. Yeah, yeah. I did it to Japan. I don't have money for first. Those are $10,000 tickets. Right. I don't have money for that. So, and I do that with hotels. I, I focus on Hilton. Yeah. Hilton Marriott is getting a lot better. Hilton's reward program is very good, mm-hmm. and Hampton Inns are part of the program. And Hamptons are in every small town. Really? Yes. So, and here's the thing: from the outside, they look very boring, mm-hmm. but they all have a free breakfast from six to ten, and it's a full. You got you and I are vegetarians. Sure. So there's yes. Food we can eat. Okay. Um, coffee, tea, all that stuff. Uh. They all have a, a pool. Most of them have a pool and a hot tub. Right, right. I swim laps. Yeah. And all the rooms are very consistent. Decent bed, nice desk, nice office chair. Like, And you're getting Hilton points. So what I do, I boom, and I, I do a gig once a year on Oahu, mm-hmm. and the gig pays okay, but it's not enough. So I usually like pay for a plane ticket. And then I cash in my Hilton. That, that, that's my vacation. Nice. Yeah, that's great. A year of staying at Hampton Inns by freeways in the Midwest. <laughs> that <laughs> then pays for me to stay at the Hilton in Waikiki for four nights. Uh-huh. And that's why I think it's 
That's actually a good, because I know there's a lot of young comics listening. That's a good note. Pick an airline and pick a hotel chain and stay with them. Stay. You're going to eat it a couple times up front. Right. It's going to be pricey up front, but think long term, man. I'm telling you, people say that, well, what, you know, it's, it's, oh, I love Southwest. I said to Southwest, I flew first class for free once on United. Mm hmm. On a on a seven forty seven, wow. so it's first business and and coach. Yeah, yeah. It was. Does Southwest do that? <laughs> no, no, they don't. No. And I'm telling you, I used so this this gig I just did in Oahu. Then my girlfriend and I went to Maui for four nights. I used a hundred thousand United miles to stay at a swanky fucking resort, mm -hmm. worth every penny. Sure, sure. And I'm telling you, I do that with uh, Hertz too. Pick a rental. And oh, I, yeah, I, rental car, yeah, yeah. I, and I do the same thing on my, my Hawaii trip. Then I have a free rental car for four days because mm -hmm. a year of renting cars. I tell people that if you're going to travel for a living, pick one. Yeah. American, United, whatever, and stick with it. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, but so, you brought up an interesting point, jacuzzis. I'm a, I, some people are like, oh, they're gross. I don't, there's so much, chlorine kills everything. All right, well, here's my question. human skin. We both work the... <laughs> We both work in color in your hair. Yeah. <laughs> we both work the Las Vegas Improv. Yes. They have a nice spa. Love that spa. That jacuzzi. Do you go naked or you go shorts? I go naked. Okay. Because it's man only. Right, right. I've thought about wearing shorts in there and I've done that, but then I'm just like, eh, I feel it out. You know, I usually am there when there's no, like, I don't know. There's, I'm usually there like nine in the morning. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I'm there at one, two. I go nine. Empty? Empty. Oh, of course, it's Vegas. Everybody's still sleeping. Everyone's still sleeping. Yeah, yeah. There's like one or two people on the treadmill, like the runner. Yeah, yeah. The crazy runner people. Sure, yeah. And then... What I do is you have to sign in. I look and find out where the comic has been. Like, okay, Graham came in at 9 o'clock this morning. All right, I'm good. I don't have to see his wang in the jacuzzi, because that's really all I just don't want to do. I don't right. want to see the other comic's penis. Yeah, that's true. I Other people's are fine. I know. I just, I just don't want to have to, while he's on stage, just go, I saw his uh, penis earlier great. today. Funny bit, but I saw his penis. I know his penis, but I know what his <laughs> asshole looks like. Uh, Carrie Toboggan. Tobobbin. Tobobbin. Carrie Tobobbin, yeah. He booked. He used to book... Um, the old hornblowers? He might still... He might book hornblowers, but I know he booked... Uh, didn't he... Book the MGM or no? He, he oh booked, really? He booked Catch right all the Catch clubs. For oh, a while, I Harry think. booked all the Catches. I think so. Okay, all right. I thought he was Hornblowers, but I could be wrong. He might do both. Okay, uh, I'll say this again: Catch a Rising Star. Boy, that is one franchise that got down the shitter, man. That should be, that should be up. Uh, that should be above the Improvs, of course. That was the place to be in the seventies. Catch and the, was, and the New York Club, and the, like it was. Yeah, and they had a. I mean, and now, look, look now at, it's like a one nighter in a hotel in Princeton. I know. I know. It's, it's a shame. And look at what the improv's done. Yeah, yeah. You know, thirty some clubs across the country or whatever, and they own so, a lot of those funny bones too. Right, right. Cats should be doing that too. I know. I don't know what happened. So come on, Carrie. What the what did you do to it? it? You get drove it, it into the ground, Carrie. I'm just kidding. He's a nice guy. Do you ever get nervous? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's being a comic, being an asshole, asking us the question. That's a great, that's just like Bernadette's joke. Right, exactly. Because that's a question we're always asked. Yeah. Do you, you, get, get, nervous? Do you get nervous? No. Do you get nervous? I can never, you, what you do is so, I hate when people say, oh my God, what you do is so hard. I'm so, like, I don't know. There's so much more harder jobs. I mean, it's hard, but it's not. It's not hard. hard. We have great You know what lives. I mean? Yeah. I mean, Laura, Laura House did, did time last night at the, at the improv and she was making that joke too. She's like, really? Hard. Yeah, you're right. I'm going to go up to a coal miner and be like, you have no idea what <laughs> trying to get booked on a gig is <laughs> like, you know, I it, it, just drive through a construction. Yeah. Just those, those cats, like even the person holding the stop and slow sign, <laughs> does that seem like a fun, easy gig to yeah, you? They get run over. Yeah. They get killed. It's in the hot sun or it's freezing. I was yeah, just yeah. in Minnesota. They're still doing construction in Minnesota <laughs> in February, man. But I can't get this call back to work. It's I, just, <laughs> I don't know. And it's so hard to get gigs booked. And if you just, yeah, I mean, show business is hard in the <laughs> sense that it's not fair, but come on. I was talking to listener Tom Nurberg. I think I'm saying that right, Tom. Um, he's also a big listener, rock solid, and lives up in San Francisco. Coming up to the Purple Onion there this summer. Uh, and he's a fireman. And I and he would contacted me on Facebook or something. And I was going to Vegas. And I'm like, ah, this is Vegas, it's like six nights, man. It's this is two shows a right. night. You know, I'm kind of bitching about how hard it was. And then he 
not joking around, was like, yeah, I had a rough week also. I had to pull this dead woman out of a burning <laughs> building. Like, the woman we've known. Like, and I'm like, well, I'm just a big douchebag. Uh, what you should say is, uh, right, talk to me when you do a late show Friday. <laughs> I used to do that with Ken Jung, uh, who now is a sitcom doctor, Ken. Mm-hmm. When he, before he blew up and was like, I remember, like, I'd see him at the improv. Yeah, and He yeah. was a full physician. And I be and I remember one time inviting him, like, "Hey, dude, I'm having like I had like a showcase or something. Can you mind coming to me?" He's like, oh, "Actually, that's when I work a cancer ward." <laughs> and I was like, "And that was the joke." I kept going, "All right, whatever. You do your little cancer <laughs> thing. Um, I have television people coming to watch me do seven minutes." Yeah, like, he was a full on doctor he's a physician doing stand up, doing stand-up. still doing stand up at the same yeah. time. Hilarious, man. And he used to do those great raps. Oh, dude. <laughs> he, he would tell me the pressure he was getting because he came, you know, he's Korean. So there's this very much like, <clears throat> like you're a lawyer or a doctor and this stand up comedy, his family was like, what? Oh, really? Like the only way he could still be doing it is by blowing up in Todd Phillips movies. You know, like there's, <laughs> yeah, exactly. there's, there's no way you could, you could he could keep doing, or at least not get pressure unless you're in like the most successful comedy franchise. Ever Holy crap. Whatever. Wow. Wow. My parents gave up on me a long time ago. <laughs> All right. There is. You would mean happy. Both, I'm buddy. doing a podcast. Yeah. I still don't know what it is. Oh yeah. This show's great. My friend Susie Nakamura plays, uh, his, oh. uh, his wife. He's great. Who I ran into at comedy, uh, not comedy film nerds at the pod fest. I hadn't yeah. seen her in like eight years. Oh, really? Oh, it was great, man. She's big been, hug, big kiss. She's been my so dish. awesome. She's been a regular. She's written articles for us at Comedy mm-hmm. Film Nerd. She wrote a couple chapters in our book. Mm-hmm. And we had her. She brought Dave Foley to oh, right, the podcast right. yeah, last yeah. year. And the two of them, because he's on Dr. Ken as mm-hmm. well. And uh, she, Susie Nakamura makes me laugh so hard like, oh yeah she, i've known her since chicago she's one of the funniest people oh i didn't realize you guys went way that that far oh, back yeah she i met did, her out here she did second city and all yeah. that stuff yeah she's hilarious we met doing an improvised play back in when i i don't know 2000 i guess it was who else nice. it was me her jerry minor uh i don't know who others names i can yeah, she's an amazing improviser yeah amazing improviser hilarious actress r- really sweet girl glad for both of them yeah so seriously do you ever get nervous <laughs> the only time I get, I get, I don't get nervous. I mean, like if you're like doing something on TV, I might get a little nervous. Uh-huh. Like just doing some gig. No, I get anxious when it's the it's the type of gig I'm headlining, and when you're headlining, the ticket sales are so important. Yeah, that yeah. that's what I'm like. Shit. Like I promoted this. I tweeted it. I was. Mm-hmm. I, I said it on our pod. Like because you know, it doesn't. There's clubs I've headlined where the ticket sales weren't good all week, and it's like, yeah. The, the owner flat out said, "Man, I think you're hilarious, but I got to." I know it stings a little, man. I got one from the Bray Improv last year. I came back to do. I texted him. I wanted to come back and do it. Like, yeah, well. Your ticket sales weren't that good last time. I'm like, oh, I know, but it still hurts that you say it again. But I'm like, what about the time before that? They were great. And they're like, yeah, and we're only going off the last show. I'm telling you, like, and I'm on both sides of it. With mm-hmm. LA Podfest, I've had to tell comics, you know, you were in our festival, but you had nine people there. Oh, yeah. You know, I love, I love your podcast. I think it's awesome. I think you're hilarious, but... We have a fucking huge budget. Are you talking to me? Yeah, Murray. This is a this is a tough time to bring it up, but I just I think you got to go back to paying for haircuts. I really, <laughs> call back, ladies. Hey yo. Um, no, but it's like uh, um, it is it is a thing, and it, it's like being on the other side of it, like producing mm-hmm, sure. and knowing, and you've produced shows. There's a budget. There's a reality of that budget. Mm-hmm. As a performer, it will always sting. Mm-hmm. It's never going to not sting. Oh, sure. The difference for me now is I don't bellyache as much about the sting as I used to. Right. Because I just understand the economics of the business. Right. Because I have to tell this. I mean, I literally had to say, look, I get it. I've been told I can't work a club anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but. That's got to ease it a little bit. Yeah, because for they, the other person anyway. I mean, know, and that's why I like it because the, the I mean, one one club owner that said it to me, he's really cool and really straightforward with me. So I, the way he said it to me, I was like, well, that's how I will say it. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. You know, yeah. 
because he wasn't he didn't he didn't just avoid my calls he didn't just right he said he just flat out he's real straightforward and, and i really respect that about the mm-hmm. guy and and i've started to do some business with him his company might be doing some business with podfest mm-hmm. and so it was it was like that's i just was like well that's how i want to be talked to yeah that's great you know because you know this like a long maybe is better or a, a quick no is better than a long maybe yeah or just not responding yeah just fucking tell me no yeah so no, I, you know what? I will say this is what in, in what Cody at the improv in Brea told me was like, yeah, your numbers weren't that good. I'm like, I know. He said, but let's work out a liquor deal. Maybe we can get Jack and Coke in here to do it. Like he wasn't like, yes. sorry, your sales weren't good. He knows me. Right. He knows I can deliver. He's like, maybe we can do something together and bring those numbers back up. Well, that's what I love because there is, there is, especially in this new economy, this new mm-hmm. digital whatever and, and I think the recession sort of taught a lot of people like old business models. I don't know. Yeah. And everyone's being more open. The comedy clubs too, especially that are getting podcasts in there and stuff. Mm-hmm. I think they're more open to some sort of, cause it, it were like it, it, if it works, it works. Yeah. If the money, like we're businessmen. So if you come to me with a thing that works, I'm in. Sure. Sure. You know, like if you like the person and you think they're funny and talented and they're not a pain in the ass, which those are important things. <laughs> those are definitely those, important. They're, they're not easy to come by. <laughs> oh yeah. No, those are important. There is one guy on the comics on safari tour who is no longer with us because he was a big pain in the ass. Not worth it. I'm friends with them and we'll surf together and still do other shows together. But I had to say, sorry, bud, not worth it. And he, he's like, all right, that's how I am. I'm like, okay, I'll see you in the water. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and he's like, cool. All right. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Casey Murphy, uh, and if I'm allowed two questions, I think this is going to be our last one. We got to wrap things up okay. here. Uh, how are we doing on time? No, oh, we got one or two. Let's do one or two here, and then I got plenty more. So maybe we'll do this as a part two in a couple of weeks. It's great. Do it's a, a great thing. Episode. You should do more of these. Yeah. Well, I, I've, I've, I've apparently used all my 35 fans. <laughs> I need I need 36 to get into Podfest next year. <laughs> Actually got 18, and a bunch of them are asking twice. Yeah, that's true. All right, right. Asher. All right. Thanks for noting that, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no. a businessman. That's what Sorry, I do. Sorry. Numbers don't do. lie, Murray. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I can't pay fucking rent on this gun. Daryl Asher. <laughs> Casey Murphy, if I'm allowed two questions, and you are because you've been with me since the beginning, is there a competitive attitude between comics when they do their set as if laughs were a commission check for salespeople? Or is it more like working together to make the show roll smoothly? I understand the second half. I don't get the commission part of that. Oh, I, I think I understand yeah. the commission thing. Like, are you're, we judging? You're a businessman now. You're, you're no longer an artist. <laughs> like, you're no longer an my artist. My soul's dead. <laughs> I just want to crush people for a nickel. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. When I'm in the next tax bracket with you, we can talk. <laughs> oh, believe me, friend. <laughs> I, I'm not making a lot of money as this digital entrepreneur yet. Um, <laughs> But uh, I think I, I, if I understand the qu- question correctly, are we all sitting in the back of the room like, well, this comic got 10 laughs and I only got seven. Are we doing that oh, sort of thing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's some comics out there who are, I think we're all competitive. You have to, oh, be, definitely. to be in this business. Oh, definitely, 100%. But like, I think some comics are just over the top and they're dicks about it. Mm-hmm. Like, I think we all want to have good shows. And nobody wants to follow someone that destroyed and then eat it. Right. You know, so we all like, 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 uh, um, I did a show once at the Hollywood improv and, um, Lori kill. I had Lori kill Martin and Baron Vaughn on it mm-hmm. and Lori kill Martin destroyed. She's fucking funny. She right. did my show last night. She destroyed. And, and Baron was watching her set and he was going next and he was talking to me. He goes, dude, he goes, I was going to try some new shit. Uh-uh. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, and it was a packed house. It was like Valentine's Day a year ago. Right, right. And he was like, so he had that, like that, I, but he wasn't like, fuck Lori or anything. He's like, okay, damn, she set the bar high. Yeah, yeah. And then he went on stage and destroyed. Okay. So the audience, I think we as comics can get in our heads, but I think the audience isn't like, some audiences are judgmental dicks for sure. Sure, sure. But some audiences are just like, let's have fun. Like, we just want to laugh and have a good time. And this Mm -hmm. comic was great. And this comic was great. Loved it. And so I prefer putting shows together where it's everyone is doing the second part of this question. Yeah. Like, everyone wants the overall show to be great. And it's sort of 
it's sort of yes to both of these parts of the question. They all want the show to be great. And part of that is, well, I want my, I want my set to kill. Sure. But I want everyone else to kill. Like when we've done comics on Safari, I don't want everyone to eat it and then I have a great set. Right. Because I want the whole show to be great. But I also think there's two different types of shows we're talking. If we're talking a regular weekend show, opener, middle, headliner, you everybody wants... Like having to follow that guy who did street jokes and 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 headline that last show was like all right I got f- eight minutes of work to do yeah, yeah, yeah. to get him so this is what stand up really is so I so I've got to work so you want your openers to do good because you don't want to work and you if you're an opener you want to do good so that they'll they don't have the headliner doesn't have to work and they'll bring you back right so in that situation I think everybody wants the now when you get to like the showcase rooms like the improv I think it's I think I mean I uh, everybody wants but I think it's I think it's a free for all at that point. I think it just goes to who you are. You and I want the show, the whole show to be great mm-hmm. if we're just doing a ten minute right. slot on it. But then there's other ones who are like, I don't care. I'm I want to go after him and I'm right. going to do this. And there's all that, that crap. yeah, I, and I think it's, it depends on the type of like like when I and, I and I'm sure it's you. This one, you know, when the improv lets you headline, you get to pick the lineup, right? I mean, they might suggest people. So when I pick the lineup, I'm picking a lineup because I want everyone to be great because I have friends and fans coming to the show and I want them to be like, man, that whole show was awesome. I like introducing them to new comics. Mm -hmm. Like Kira Soltanovich did my show once and everyone loved her. And then they came back when she headlined. Right, exactly. So yeah, that's yeah. what I want. And last night I did this this variety show at the at the lab at the Improv. And so again, I picked everybody. And a lot of were some acts I hadn't seen. And Jamie, who books the, suggested them to me, but I I really trust his judgment. Yeah, yes. And he's coming from the same place. I want the whole show to be cool and great. And and it's my it's Graham Elwood's show, so I right. want everything to be cool. But you're right. I'm just like some industry showcase. You kind of want the guy to tank so yes. you can go, so you look like you hit the home run. I mean, you yeah, know, totally. That's that's. I, 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 you know, I have a big uh, improv. Uh, I went through IOO and all that stuff. Background. I remember when I would audition for commercials and they'd have improvisers in, mm-hmm. and the, the number one rule for in improvising is make your buddy look good, right? And that is out the window. When it comes to auditioning, oh Christ! <laughs> it's like you, just... I got burned on that so <laughs> really? many times because I would be like, "All right, let's team," and then some guy would just be like, bah, 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 bah. "Just step on your neck, step on anything," <laughs> and yes, and they'd be like, "Well, Grandma," and I'd be like, "I remember saying one casting director, I said, God damn it, put me.'" I go, you saw me in the lobby joking around. Why didn't you team me up with my friends? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We would have fucking destroyed. Instead, you had some model actress trying to be funny just Ew. sticking her tits out tell, like shut up <laughs> yes yuck that's going yeah. on i don't do that anymore all right this is great i gotta uh copy the because we didn't even get halfway through this i don't think i gotta copy these and save this first questions. and we'll come back and we'll do this again and I, you know what i promised you guys a bonus episode so uh maybe in the next couple of weeks i'll get somebody else in here and tackle this again and graham you're obviously love, welcome to come back and whenever you want me it. back i love these questions yes and this is great so what's going on with graham what is going oh, on with Graham? We should have done one more question. Make it a long one. Make it a long answer. We have a few you minutes. You want to do to another kill. question? All right, let's do one more. All right, let's do one more. Now we're going to go long. <laughs> who was who was that? Was that Casey? Uh, Lauren Erlinger. How does your version of the Aristocrats go? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're very comedy savvy people. They are seriously, man. Uh, I don't even have it, a version of God, the Aristocrats. I don't know that I do. The Arist- <sighs> but that's a great part about that documentary uh-huh. is when they say the comics version of the Aristocrats gives you a window into who they are. Who they really are. <laughs> you know, however they write that. Is, and I was like, that was really... That's it, because my favorite, and I, I I don't actually have one, but my favorite one, for, for, the, Aristoc- for the people who don't know, the Aristocrats is this longstanding joke, which is about being as crude and right. horrible and offensive offensive and, yeah. as it's really a joke for it's a com, it's a comics joke right and they did a movie and uh what's his face he's been on the program a few times provenza provenza did a documentary on it and every and my favorite one is actually the south park one and uh, i'm not even a big south park fan but they're like <laughs> you know then he does his impression of the victims of 9 11 it's yeah. just, it's horrible yeah. and it's great <laughs> But my favorite, my all-time favorite one is Wendy Liebman's friend of the show. She's on there, and she just turns it on her ear. She's like, they come in, they knit, 
They make tea for everybody. Oh, what's the name of your act? The goddamn motherfucker cunts or something like that. <laughs> Just really turns it on her ear. She's awesome. We love Wendy Liebman. Sorry, that's a little bit too deep to go into for the last question. So we'll call it there. Maybe All we'll right. approach that one. What's going on, Graham? What is going At on? At Murray V on Twitter. Yes. Uh, yes. Just, at Murray just, V on Twitter. I'm just going to interrupt with all my at, friends. So I get that. At Road Stories. Um, yeah. So uh, com- I'll be at the Las Vegas Improv in June. <laughs> um, are we, let's see. We're going to. Am I setting you up for another joke? I don't or? Think I have anything else. Okay. Uh, yeah. So oh, the Purple Onion, <laughs> June 2nd. Great. That's a great gig. <laughs> I haven't done it yet. I'm excited. Um, Tim Lee and I are co-headlining that. Oh, I love San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I love San Francisco. Um, Earbuds podcast. We're doing a whole run, actually, <laughs> Tim and I. <laughs> We're doing a whole run. We're doing uh, Purple Onion on Thursday, then Laughs Unlimited, and then uh, we're locking in. Who books on Laughs Tuesday. Unlimited? I'd love to get up there. <laughs> I'll give you her number. She's uh, hard to get a hold of. They're right. great, though. I love them, but she's hard to get a hold of. Yeah, because the punchline... They're not giving me any love. Molly over yeah. there. Ma- I love Molly, but yeah, she's yeah. not giving me any love. So I gotta, I gotta go across the street. All right, like. man. Yeah, I'll totally hook you up. Um, and go ahead. I won't interrupt you anymore. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good bit. Um, so earbuds podcasting documentary is uh, done. Oh, great. Um, we're submitting it to. It's festivals. three and a half hours long. <laughs> That's the first part. The second part is another four. Um, no, we got it down to about a, an hour 40. Okay, great. It was about an hour 45 that we showed at PodFest. So. Oh, and that, man, that was so well received at PodFest. Thanks. I have to, and even, even some, like, I even knew some bitter people going in there came out and were like, wow, that was really good. And was, I say, and I say bitter, just, you know, just sure. hardened comics hard came, comics. came out and were just like, that was really good. That's good to hear. You know, that was the cool part about it. That, you want to go back to the do you get nervous question? Mm-hmm. Screening a movie that you directed is the most nerve-wracking thing on the face of the earth. Oh, really? Comedy, if the crowd gets shitty, like, I have control. Mm-hmm. Even if the, oh, mic, sure. if the mic goes out, I can yell, like, I can get the train on track. If a movie screening is shitty, it's just watching a train slowly fall off a bridge <laughs> and just dive into a, like, there's nothing you can do. And right. it's so horrifying. But when it is well received, it's 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 really cool. So earbuds is done. It was so cool screening the 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 rough cut at Podfest. My hands look great in you it. You have the best. You're the best podcast hand actor that's out there. I there's got to be a career in that. Well, you're going to get nominated. <laughs> um, we'll see you tonight at the party. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get nominated. Well, first of all, your hands are white, so you got a really good shot. Oh, I got a good totally good Oscars. shot. Right. Um, so uh, but that black where they count, if you know what I mean. <laughs> hey, hey, what? Whoa. I don't get it. <laughs> um, so yeah, that movie's done, uh, and it'll be, uh, you know, we'll have it for sale in some capacity by the mm-hmm. fall. Okay. Um, Are you going to do it at PodFest again this year? That's a good question. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't not. think you should. I don't think we should. We blew, we shot the wad last year. And you bumped uh, me out of my slot. <laughs> <laughs> if you wanted to do road stories against the most I know, anticipated I know, <laughs> and I appreciate that, but I waited till the opening of Star Wars before I did a live one at the Arclight. <laughs> Got a good choice. Yeah, you got good, you got good, 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 good stuff. Um, so yeah, that'll be an LA Podfest. Uh, it's a, it'll be in September at the Sofitel. Where we have the dates, it's all locked in. We're announcing next week. Oh, great! When do tickets, tickets on, on sale? sale next week? Next week. Oh, this and this is live too. So yeah. tickets on sale next week. Um, and we sold out last year. Yeah, so, that's great. And we're only releasing a limited number of. We're gonna. Early bird special, hundred dollar weekend pass. But mm-hmm. then, if you don't get it in this first round, the price will go up. Okay. So I'm encouraging people to buy early. Guys, come on! I'm talking to a bunch of listeners who haven't come out yet. <sighs> I'm looking. I'm looking at this list. Casey Murphy, why aren't you coming down? Daryl Asher, why aren't you coming down? You guys are pod listeners. Jim Glass, I see you down there. We'll get to your question next time. Andrew Rich, you guys got to come out. It's man. the coolest thing. I mean, <clears throat> and just the way everyone is the community. Like last year, you were doing the Periscope. Mm-hmm. Like that was really cool. We had some tech issues, and you jumped in and. And people loved that. And I just love the whole community of it. And if you're a podcast listener, it's the greatest weekend you're ever going to have. And I'm not bullshitting you at all. Like, Yeah, it's so much fun. It's, it's a so weekend of not having to go explain what a podcast is to anybody. <laughs> it's a weekend of everyone getting you. Yeah. Like, I've had so many people go, I felt like an outsider my whole life until I came. Like, so many people. So... Yeah, so stick around for updates on PodFest. Mm-hmm. On- There's still a woman I think should be banned from the festival. <laughs> oh, she's so annoying. She is so annoying. All right, sorry, go on. She's there every year, but God, she's annoying. 
Um, All right, if you're a podcast listener, then you're a comedy nerd, generally speaking. Yeah. If you're a comedy podcast, then you know etiquette in a stand-up show. Right. Shut up. Yeah. Shut up and laugh. That's all you have to do. That's all you got to do. It's anyway, not hard. She shouldn't come back. Yeah. So Murray's talking about Kira Saltanovich. <laughs> uh, no. So yeah, check those things out. Earbuds, uh, PodFest, and awesome. Comedy Film Nerds, and my tour dates, Graham, at Graham Elwood. Check all that out. Excellent. And I am, of course, at Murray V uh, on Twitter. Uh, I just put up a ton of dates for the summer at Murray Yeah, Blair, I've got some new com. dates coming up. Uh, a little I'll be, slow. I'll be, I'll be, a little slow. I'll be in, <laughs> a little slow. I'll be in Tahoe, March 2nd through... Oh, I One am more headlo- question. I is, am- is timing a factor <laughs> when it comes to comedy? Graham, you want to answer that? I will be headlining the Skyline Comedy Cafe in Appleton, Wisconsin, March 17th through 19th. So how many tickets I sell is important. If you live in the yes. Fox Valley, buy a ticket. Yes. Uh, where were we? At Murray V on Twitter, murrayvaleriano.com. Uh, write a review on iTunes if you haven't. You haven't done that in a while. We had a couple new ones up there. That's always great. Gives it a little boost on the... On the thing, and uh, what else should I ask him for as a podcast guy? If uh, a review, what else? You know, the the thing we say on comedy film nerds is we say uh, vote with your dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we we have an online store, so we say spend twenty dollars with us once a year, and that mm-hmm. can keep us afloat. So if there's a way to spend twenty dollars with Murray, do mm-hmm. it. Okay. Um, and the the these things might not seem like they're big, but they are because everyone's tracking data and numbers. So mm-hmm. how many followers Murray has, how many positive reviews of the road stories, all those clicks, likes, follows, those all add up. Mm-hmm. And that's, those are free ways you can help support this podcast. And free, Murray. free, free. I'm talking to you people who haven't liked us on the Facebook page. Like don't, the Facebook page. Don't be a douche. Share it on whatever oh. social media you're on. Hey, guys, listen to this. Yeah, yeah. Tell your friends about it. Like, those little things, you have no idea how much they help. There's, there's comedy clubs booking you based on the number of Twitter followers you have because right. that, direct, that, that directly links to ticket sales. There's TV shows. Are you kidding? Yeah, executives, Netflix, yeah. network executives, agents. You know, if, if, if Murray, if you or I had 100,000 Twitter followers – or more, it's it's a lot hell of a lot easier to get a meeting. Oh yeah, definitely. To pitch a show, to get an agent, all that shit. Mm-hmm. So all those things help, guys. Anyway, Graham Elwood, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Uh, it's always good hanging out with you, and uh, we'll hit the surf when you get back into town. You got it. All right, thanks, guys, for listening. Come see Graham when he comes to your town. He's very funny. Thank you. At Marie V on Twitter. <laughs> you want to know about life on the road? It's Zeus, tacos, angry dwarfs, strippers waving guns And these fights, cantle flights, running with the runs And blacklists, bounce checks, great a bachelorette Drunks in the front, making out for your set And middle acts doing blow, more missing merch And drive the rental car past another mega church And juice keys, vagina fists, your cell phone is gone One big law and order marathon